Star Citizen's Aegis Hammerhead is an anti-fighter Corvette-class ship that can provide devastating firepower. It is equipped with six manned turrets designed to combat fighters. But with such an outstanding performance as an anti-fighter ship, is the Hammerhead a successful Corvette? Hello, my name is Forfox, and today I want to discuss with you how the mess hall in the interior of the Hammerhead is displacing other accommodations from utilizing the space. This video will have three sections, the first being the location of the mess hall, second will be about the layout of the mess hall, which includes a hand-drawn map of the second floor that I will be converting into an AutoCAD floor layout. Finally, we have our third section, which includes my overhaul of the second floor accommodations using professional drafting software. I am a new YouTuber and an engineering student, so by the end of this video, please let me know if you like this format. Any sort of feedback would be helpful. Chapter 1. Location. Naturally, I would like to begin the review of the Aegis Hammerhead with one of the most compelling aspects of owning the subcapital patrol gunship, the massive mess hall on the second floor. I am beginning here because there's a high probability that this is the first time you have ever seen or heard about this elusive mess hall, and that needs to be addressed. There's no functionality to it at the moment, you can't microwave or serve yourself anything as of yet, but you are allowed to sit down at this table. There's an extra area that features a dedicated pantry room to store additional supplies for extended traveling or to feed an entire army upon arrival. Right outside the kitchen, we have a long hallway. Nothing much in here aside from the two shield generators that you can't interact with. At the moment, they are there as a placeholder because the ship was made about four years ago and interactable components were implemented after the ship's debut. As we head up to the hallway towards the front of the ship, which is also known as the bow in naval terms, we come across the first of two elevators that will take you down to the main floor. As we head to the back of the ship, which is also known as the stern, we can access the engineering room. Here, we have a viewing panel of the ship's engineering room and cargo hold below, as well as an engineering console which is basically an oversized multifunctional display panel, or MFD for short. Finally, we can access the second elevator that will bring you to the main floor. To gain access to this top floor from the bottom floor, you must take one of two different elevators. The first entrance is adjacent to the captain's quarters and across from the center man turret, all of which you can find in the middle of the ship's hull. The second entrance is near the cargo hold in the rear or stern of the ship. The elevator is tucked in the back of what seems to be suit lockers. The locations of these entrances can be viewed with this image to better understand the layout of the ship. Note that this is an old concept photo from about five years ago. It does not include a space for the first elevator or even the two engineering rooms on each side of the hammerhead, let alone a second floor. But the hammerhead is a large ship and this picture helps show the general layout of the interior. What we don't have a picture of is the second floor layout for the hammerhead, which leads me to my second chapter. Chapter two, layout. Here's a little napkin sketch I did of the hammerhead's upper floor. I pretty much eyeballed the general area by walking around the top floor and sketched the layout on one note. I did make one noticeable mistake by the pantry and vertical hallway by not having a distinctive hull in between both areas. These two rooms should not be connected. I should also mention that this area is not accessible on the upper floor. This is because the turret is accessed via the main floor and the gunner is transported vertically to reach the turret. This is the turret we are talking about. You could see it move someone upwards. Also, the walls in between the hallway and the kitchen in this area are a lot thicker than depicted in my sketch. You can see here as a walk between the two areas, the clear separation of the kitchen and cylindrical hallways exclusive to the Aegis ships. I need to update my design, which wasn't so easy on one note. I wouldn't be able to move walls around without erasing existing lines, so I decided to install professional drafting software that a lot of my civil engineering friends use to make parking lots for airports or bike lanes for cities that span a few blocks. I know it's not directly Star Citizen related, but it makes for a great introductory example to any STEM or engineering students. As you can see, it's not something that everyone has access to. We will also be using it to draft up layout improvements for the hammerhead later in the video. One of my best friends was able to help summarize the software before he began to teach me how to use it. So AutoCAD. AutoCAD is a program used to design and 2D and 3D space of various disciplines. I had to learn the basics of the line and polyline tools to begin my outline of the hallway I drew in one note. I added some new words to my vocabulary, like hatch, which describes filling the walls with lines. 
I also had to learn some key fundamentals like closing a polyline entity with properties. That way the hatch lines don't fill inside the area. Okay, now we'll go to the bottom of the properties and see how it's miscellaneous. So that means if you try to hatch it, it wouldn't work because it's open technically. So just select it and then it creates a little line to close it. Shit like that is like, you need that in order to make the hatches work. There are some other useful tips like F8, which lets me snap orthogonal lines. All right, now try and move the polyline up and down. Orthogonal polylines. Only move up and down, left and right. Now click F8 again, turns that off. Middle mouse button drags the model around. Snapping to existing entities is accomplished by hovering over the corner and selecting a starting point. The last thing I needed to learn was how to make text and I was pretty much on my way to finishing and troubleshooting the draft model. edit our design to within a specific tolerance if we wanted to. But for now, I think it looks pretty good. Now let's have a discussion about the potential use of this space, which leads me to my last and final chapter. Chapter 3, Overhaul of the Second Floor. This dedicated kitchen is of considerable size compared to other amenities that the hammerhead provides, especially compared to this big hole in the middle of the ship. Now, we do know that CIG is working on NPCs to be able to interact with trays, utensils, food consumption, and waste disposal. Maybe there's a chance that in the future, CIG would consider reworking this area to implement NPC usage. The area is what I call a soft tier two mess hall. As for the engineering systems, we currently have two rooms downstairs dedicated to engineering and ship components, as well as extra computers by the main engines. I would hope that these areas would be able to accommodate most of the modules that are required for engineering and to render the obligation to head upstairs counterproductive. Next, let's talk about the shield generators in the hallway and relocating them to the floor below. There is an area in the stern of the ship that looks like it can accommodate the two shield generators. I would put them there so that they could be accessed for maintenance along with the engines. Distributing the upstairs engineering area and removing the hallway would allow for a diverting area to manifest for the crew on the second floor, particularly one that is fighter group focused. A heavy emphasis would be placed on the types of burdens encountered by such groups. I believe that the main area should be divided into four sections, an armory that includes attachments, a provisions pantry for food, a utility or tool section, and a medical section, all of which conveniently can be equipped by hand and by personal storage. All four of these subjects compose the pillars for a successful multi-crew ship in Star Citizen. The addition of such areas would allow for players to significantly increase gameplay value aboard the Hammerhead and in fighter group compositions. I would advocate for the Hammerhead to be stock equipped with entry level weapons, plural, a medical gun, a few med pens and oxy pens, a tractor beam, a small collection of double dogs or mule bars, a case of water, a fire extinguisher, and a repair tool. These essential items should be required to spawn as stock components. It should also be included when redeeming an insurance claim. Now, let's look at the layout changes I would make on the floor plan. We can see that the walls are fitted with weapon racks and suit lockers. In the center, we have four pillars that can outfit your crew with jobs and specialties of their choosing. I moved the kitchen to this top area here. As for the pantry, we already have a kitchen on the wall and a food section in the center. Yes, you could continue the use of this space for some secondary foods, or you could turn this into some kind of private locker for the captain to fill with extra heavy weapons or rare items like a gold sniper. I also went ahead to change the elevator out with a ladder system in case the power was not functioning. As for the elevator, we can see that we have rotated it, moved it down, and made it wider. The floor below the elevator won't need the flight suit section anymore, since it is being moved to the top. I think that the addition of a bigger elevator will really help with bigger orgs and getting them armed up. It is meant to increase the amount of people you can shuttle in and out of the space. I also made room for two tables for people to re relax or to be briefed by the commanding officer. We accomplished this wide area because in our original sketch, we could see that this area is asymmetrical. There exists a point here 
with filler hole because it appears symmetrical when viewed from the exterior. We could see on the main floor that there is an unused area on the top right where the void exists. So I expanded the area out in my plans, and this area should now be more accommodating. If an escort gladius was to get a few scratches, maybe you could have some of your crew grab a few repair tools and EVA out to fix them up, or maybe act as engineers to help repair internal damage. Maybe someone got hurt. You have access to medical equipment now that's on standby if anyone needs to be patched up. With these accommodations, I have no doubt that the Aegis Hammerhead would be able to act as a flagship for fighter groups. In conclusion, what I hope to have accomplished here was to give some life to an area that needed some attention. I was able to show the location and amenities of an area inadequate to facilitate organizations. I was also able to present the area with professional drafting software that my best friend, who goes by the in-game name of Pedro, taught me how to use. We then used that software to create an area that would be used by orgs and fighter groups. I hope that this video was informative and educational. Feel free to hop on my Discord where I am growing a community and an organization. I wish you all well. Have a good one.